My name is Erika, and I don't work for waste management company. I don't work for the city of Ljubljana. I work for an NGO called Ecologists Without Borders, and I also coordinate zero waste on, uh, in Slovenia. Um, I will present the case of Ljubljana today, but to start with, I think we should uh, give it a little bit of a be background. We produce about 4.6 million tons of waste per year, and approximately... 18% um, is uh, municipal waste. Um, these are the numbers what we do with municipal waste, and it's better, I think, to look at it with, uh, with comparison with some other countries. Why I choose uh, Denmark and Sweden? Because in Slovenia they, are, um, they have a reputation of being a really green countries, but uh, unfortunately I, th I don't think they are in the case of waste management. Um, and it was also very influential uh, about the decision uh, from our ministry, because they were observing only the second two row, uh, the bottom two rows, uh, when they when they decided to um, create the strategy of waste management in the country, and they said, okay, uh, we are landfilling 38 percent compared to Denmark and Sweden. They are uh, um, landfilling only one percent. How they do it? They incinerate more than 50 percent of their waste. So the logical conclusion was, okay, we built an incinerator and we'll solve all, all of our problems, right? Well, wrong. Because if you check the first three rows, you see that we are creating a lot less uh, waste than Denmark and we are creating um, less waste than Sweden. We are doing better in recycling. And what we are lagging behind is actually composting. And if we manage uh, to raise the composting part uh, to the level of, exa for example, Austria, which uh, composts, uh, I think, over 30%, 34, 34% or something like that, uh, we will further decrease the amount sent to the landfills and we will uh, probably reach uh, better numbers regarding the landfills um, as Sweden and Denmark because they need to landfill um, incinerator ash in any case. Um, another thing that was pushing the recycling numbers up was uh, in Slovenia we needed to close a lot of uh, landfill sites and the number, um, the, the, the cost of landfilling uh, really went up. So that was another push to start recycling, diverting waste from, uh, from landfills. Um, so the, the board was set, ministry said we, we need at least one incinerator. Ljubljana said we'll have one in Ljubljana. Mayor was very, very in for incineration, incineration to build a huge incinerator in, in Ljubljana. And we knew that Ljubljana is doing quite a good job already with a separate collection and recycling. Um, in 2014-13, they um, managed to get a separate collection rate higher than 50%. And we said, look, it would be really a pity you're doing so good. Why would you destroy all your efforts so far by building incinerator because the numbers will go down, as it is example for in some other countries in Europe. And on the other hand, you may also see that the, um, the, the amount of waste being generated in Slovenia dropped for 15% in past, in past years. Um, but uh, we had a huge task, how to, how to persuade Ljubljana to change the plans. Um, they had two questions. One was uh, how much um, of separate collection is achievable? And the second one, what we do with the waste that cannot be sent to incinerator, what we can do with that, we don't want to landfill it. So that's why we organized together with uh, our friends from Zero Waste Europe, we organized two visits. The first one to Contrina, you saw the numbers uh, Marco showed you, and you, you see that it is achievable to reach 80, and um, as far as I know, uh, the Contarina plans to go over 90% of separate collection and recycling. So there is not actually not an upper limit. That was the first answer to the question. And the other one was, what do we do with the waste that we are planned uh, to, to send to incineration? What can you do with that, that part of the waste? So we, we visited another plant in Italy. Um, they are actually diverting uh, the... the share the, the, the amount of the waste that would otherwise go to incineration to recycling. 
and we actually saw a huge sacks of uh, RDF, which is being a fuel for uh, for incineration, in one end uh, in the uh, entrance to the plant, on the, and the other side, the plastic pallets were leaving the plant. So whenever when Ljubljana saw that, they said, "Yeah, we'll go. Okay, we'll drop the plants for incineration, and we'll go for uh, for zero waste." Um, the waste management in Ljubljana is being done by a company called Snaga, and they provide the services for the city of Ljubljana and nine surrounding uh, municipalities, uh, which amounts to over 380,000 people. Um, they started with separate collection in 2002. Uh, with, it was a really simple one. It was composed of street collection, um, they put the huge echo, uh, huge bins for uh, plastic, um, glass, and paper in the streets. So one street would have what we call Echo Island. And the separate collection really actually started to grow. In 2006, it was already over 10%. But the next, the next step uh, that Ljubljana did was introducing door-to-door -door -door collection of bio-waste. This was really, really important. You will see uh, on the next slides why. Um, and the separate collection grew constantly up to uh, over 41% in 2012. And the next step that Ljubljana did after that was uh, introducing door-to-door uh, -door collection of packaging and paper. First, they tested in 2011 in a small community close to Ljubljana, and the results were overwhelming. So they decided, okay, that's the way we want to proceed with separate collection, we'll do it uh, in the ent entire region of Ljubljana. So in 2012, they, they started uh, collecting door-to-door, um, -door, uh, four fractions from door-to-door. -door. And you see it uh, separate collection ra rate grew uh, over 51% in spring 2013. But nothing, uh, not everything went very smoothly. Uh, because uh, if the company needed to do more collection rounds, because they were collecting four different different uh, um, bins, no, and uh, that's why they reduced the frequency of collecting uh, the residuals, which led to almost a waste revolution in Ljubljana, because this was the result as you see here. Oh, sorry, as you see here. Uh, the residual bins were like really packed with waste, and the media started a company, a campaign against um, the, the Snaga company that they are moving too fast, that the people are not ready to, to do the separate collection, and so on. But Ljubljana kept um, the decision in place. They didn't want to back up, back out. And what Ljubljana did is to start a really good campaign. Um, about what the residents can actually do to decrease the amount that goes to the black black uh, black beans, or, uh, and uh, they took the journalists and TV crews to a tour over Ljubljana, um, emptying the residual waste bins and showing how much it, it, um, there is still left in those bins that can be recycled and diverted to other bins. So media started immediately after that started uh, changing the story and. Now they are join they were joining uh, Snaga to support the effort to increase the, the separate collection in Ljubljana. And here are results in uh, by the spring 2013, um, the separate collection al uh, already reached 55 percent. Um, the, the waste bins are not the only uh, part of the infrastructure in Ljubljana. We have eight collection uh, centers uh, where people may bring other, other waste flows like electric uh, equipment, bulky waste, and so on. Uh, we have one reuse center, and people may also, uh, besides taking the waste to collection centers, they may also um, leave their hazardous waste in uh, mobile units which circle the, the, the area and they, they uh, are in the same location twice a year. And uh, you may order a bulky waste collection from your door for free once a year. Um, the key ingredient in Ljubljana, same as Marco emphasized, is to communicate with the residents. Ljubljana at the beginning worked like in one way, uh, information, aware, awareness raising and so on. But after, after a while they changed. They, they uh, started to communicate both ways through me social media and through information offices and so on. So 
um, they started to work uh, closely with the children and they were surprised to see that seven, eight, nine year uh, old children already know almost everything about separate collection. So they started to, to teach with them, uh, to, to teach them about uh, responsible cons consumerism, about how to prevent waste, ab about how to reuse waste, why it is important um, to preserve the natural res resources and stuff like that. Um, Snaga started a campaign of drinking the tap water, which was later picked up uh, and moved to the national level. And the, uh, at the bottom you see a campaign, Get Used to Reuse, which is uh, about reuse uh, centers, about reuse, um, reuse of the products. And it was again picked up by the national level, and now this is uh, actually a national campaign. And you see the last one, it, they started it maybe half, half, uh, half a year ago, about uh, raising awareness about uh, food waste. And sometimes um, they, they really sound uh, almost like NGOs doing it. Um, on the other hand, you know, there's a, uh, we heard a lot of myths in Slovenia about uh, by waste management. One of them was that if you get involved in separate collection, the costs will rise. Uh, as uh, Enzo pointed out, and as Marco said, and it's same goes for Ljubljana. Uh, uh, higher separation uh, rates brings lower costs. The costs in Ljubljana are uh, way lower than in the average of, in Slovenia, and I think it's uh, one of the lowest costs in Europe, probably. And this is, uh, these are the costs for households. And these are uh, the results. Um, you may see why I, emphasize, why I emphasized separate collection of bio waste. Because in Ljubljana, it contributes the most to increasing the, the, um, the, the, the rates of uh, separate collection and uh, uh, composting and recycling. Um, but there are still some future challenges ahead in Ljubljana. No? Um, the, one of the most important one, one will be changing the MBT uh, mechanical biological treatment plant to the plant that we saw in Italy, which diverts, uh, simply put, the, it diverts the waste that would uh, end up in the incinerator, incinerator to recycling. And um, yeah, and it, it's very important that Ljubljana joined, uh, joined Zero Waste Movement because in this regional center we'll cover 40 municipalities in Slovenia, which represents a quarter of population in Slovenia. And by doing that, Ljubljana opened the door for 40, mini uh, 40 municipalities to join the, the Zero Waste strategy. Um, in, uh, in Ljubljana is not the only city in, uh, in uh, Slovenia which committed to zero waste goals. Um, they, in September 2014, there were four uh, municipality, municipalities uh, joining zero waste. In December 2014, two more. And in next few months, we expect the uh, suburban municipalities around Ljubljana to join the zero waste and uh, a coastal municipality called Piran. So we are expecting 10 more in the near future. At the end, I would like to share something more personal with you, why I am so passionate about the waste. <laughs> because to me, the waste reflects everything that is wrong with our society today. And if we change the way the sea, we see waste and the way how we handle waste, we change society and for the better. We uh, built a community when there was none, like in multi-apartment buildings, and they start do the community composting and growing their own food. We teach the children that it's much more fun to exchange the toys than to buy new ones. We preserve natural resources, we create green jobs, and step by step we are moving towards global uh, global justice. Do I have five minutes more? Yes. Yeah. Um, I would like to share a story why I chose the, the last uh, photo. I used to spend three years in um, Amazonian rainforest in Peru, and yeah. they, would dis they will dis displace about 40,000 uh, 40, indigenous uh, res residents of the area. If you remove these people from their area, they know the area and they can only survive in this area. If you move them elsewhere, they become drunks, prostitutes and beggars. Um, and they, be they, they have been fighting this them for 10 years. And these people know the Amazon, Amazon rainforest very well. 
we know, all know that it is an epicenter of bio biodiversity of this planet. And this biodiversity holds a lot of plants that may t cure the, the illnesses of our society today, including ca uh, cancer and AIDS. And the only people who know how to use these plants are these people. And why is this connected to zero waste? Because they are planning to build a dam to produce electricity for aluminium plant. And we all know that aluminium is perfectly recyclable. And it's nothing wrong if you drink the beer for a glass bottle, right? And I would like to see a hero from our world to look them in the eye and say, we are either too lazy to do our jobs or, it is, or we think it's simply too difficult. Um, I will leave you with this thought. And thank you very much for listening. And I'm open for more questions. Thank you. Thank you.